Hello, this is Dave from ERC, and this is part two of the Twin Engine Tundra build. Now, in the last video, I went over the electrical system and the wiring, and also the radio setup on the bench. But in this video, I want to show how to install those electrical components and wiring into the fuselage of a new Tundra Twin. But before we do, let's go ahead and glue the nacelles onto the wings because that's what a Tundra Twin is all about, two props. So let's do that first. Now here are the 3D printed nacelles designed by Barney Blankenship, aka BarnDog726, and I'll put a link to his Thingiverse files so that you can download the design and print them out for yourself. You can also post to Barney and ask him if he could probably make you some and send them to you. He might do it, I don't know, and I don't know how much he charges, but you could ask him. So each nacelle has a smooth side which goes on the top, and then there's a side with a channel which goes on the bottom. This channel is where the wires from the motor will go. Now the prototype plane had the nacelle right here on this third ridge, right there. And it did work, and that accommodates larger props, too. If you want a slower motor and maybe up to 10-inch props, then this is the place to go. If you are going to use the smaller 7x5 props, it's possible to put it down on this second ridge here. And I think that's what I'm going to do, put it on the second ridge on this one, even though my other one has it out here. So the first thing we do is push the nacelle over the ridge and make sure it fits good and tight which it does fit very tight, even without glue. So I drew a line around the nacelle on the top and on the bottom right here. And you'll notice these nacelles do not make contact with the wire channel right here, which is good. So now we can apply glue to the area where the line is, inside the lines. I'm going to be using fabric tack, which comes from Walmart, and it's pretty inexpensive. You can also use foam tack if you want to. Both of these will work with the EPP foam. The fabric tack has acetone in it and is not good for Depron, but it works fine for other foams and it's much cheaper than this stuff. All right, just applying the fabric tack to the inside of the nacelle right here. Also applying some fabric tack to the foam itself, top and bottom. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and push the nacelle on there and make sure it makes contact and then pull it back off and let it dry or tack up for about five minutes. So it's been about four or five minutes and now we can apply the nacelle. Make sure the smooth side is up on the wing and then you can just push it on. I mean that will not come off there no matter what after this because it's you know super tight with that fabric tack. And there's the bottom side. Okay, working on the second wing here. I got it glued and just going to go ahead and smear that around real good. And then we'll pull it off and let it tack up. So this time I only waited about three minutes for the glue to tack up. And I tell you what, it's still very, very hard to push that on there. I mean, even after just three minutes, that glue is so strong. There we go. Okay, well, those are curing. Let's go ahead and install some servos in the fuselage. Let's go ahead and install these servos. We'll take that out right in this area. Now, this is how the servos should look when we get done. You'll see that one is orientated towards the front here and one is orientated towards the rear and then the wires come through this slot right here and go towards the receiver which will be down in here. Now you should have a package like this that has the wing spar in it, two push rods or control rods if you want to call them that. Now we want to get these two connectors. Now there will be links to the servos and the kit underneath the video but what you need to do is get the pack that has the three servo arms and pick this one right here. So I'm using a 0 .078 diameter drill like that. If you can see it, there's three holes showing. 
So let's just put a dab of Loctite right on the end of this screw thread and then we'll go ahead and place the nut on there. Keep in mind the nut shouldn't be too tight because we want this keeper to move. So we want our rudder servo, this one to face towards the rear of the plane and the elevator servo to go towards the front just like this. So first let's just check to make sure both servos operate because sometimes you get a bad one out of the box. So now let's put it on the neutral position like that. You can go around until you get it to neutral. So one arm is going to go this way. Other arm goes on a 90 degree facing in like that. Then we can put the two screws in to hold the arms down and then we're done with this part. So just finishing up putting in the two machine screws for the servo arms. Next we want to mount our servos right in here and we want the servo wires to come through this little slot right here. So I found the easiest way to do that is to use one of these connectors that comes with a kit or any other one you got that has a socket like that. Push it through the hole and then plug the servo into it and pull it back through. You'll probably need a pair of tweezers or a grabber to reach down in there and pull the socket through. Then just plug your servo into the socket. So I'm just using a barbecue skewer. All right, like that. Okay, now working on the other one. I'm going to use the barbecue skewer again to just push this servo connector down in there as far as it'll go, and then I can pull it through and you can see the servo connector is now poking through where I can grab it. All right, the two servos are now in there. I didn't show myself putting them in because my hands would have been all in the way, but it wasn't very hard to just put them down in that opening. Now we can put the wood screws in to hold them. Better get a magnetic screwdriver to do this so that you don't drop them. Okay, just putting in the last screw. Now we just need to get the push rods through these little plastic tubes right here and put them into the connectors. So one of the push rods goes in the tube right here. Just find that tube and slide it in. And the other push rod goes on this side, right in this area. There's a tube sticking out and that goes right in like that. Okay, so there are the push rods right there. All right, I have one through right there. You can see it going through. Okay, so they're in there now. And I use this uh, 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench to do it. That's this one right here. Let's go ahead and test these with the servo tester just to make sure they don't rub against anything. Okay, that's looking really good. Now you should have a package like this that has the wiring harness in it. So this one right here goes in the fuselage right here. These ends right here go on the wings. Now to feed them through the holes we're going to need to take these two apart. I'm just going to go ahead and mark one so that I know which way it goes back. So I'll get them back in the same spots. And then go ahead and disconnect them. Now we can go ahead and feed these ends through the hole in the fuselage. So just feeding it through the hole and then I'll put the connector in there and then use these screws here that came with the kit to secure it. Okay, doing the other side, just feeding the wires through. Okay, they're through. Let's just take off the front cover and then we'll connect them back up. Okay, reconnecting. And I can tell which one because I put a mark on there. Okay, just making sure the round side is up the rounded corners and putting in the last two screws. While we're at it we might as well put the other two onto the wings. Also making sure that the rounded corners of the plug are going towards the top. And then we'll just put in the two screws. I left just a little wiggle room so the plug can move a little bit to make it easier to plug in. Now let's install the power system. If you missed the explanation of this power system, you can find it in the previous video, part one of the Twin Tundra build series. I'll put a link to that video under this one. 
We need a hole for our ESC wire connector to go through and it should go right about here and that's like at the edge of this front window right here backward right underneath the wing. So let's go ahead and make the hole for that. So that looks like a pretty good fit right there. We're going to push them in from the inside. Uh, I'll just go ahead and make one on the other side the same way. So now I'm going to take the power system like this, the two ESCs, and the receiver is going to be in the rear back here. Just fold that over and we'll stick that through and pull it through. Like that. Now we can put our connectors in through the sides. Just using the drill to help assist me to pull the plug through. There it is. Now I'll do the other side. So now let's plug in the elevator servo and the rudder servo. And then we have to plug in the wires that go to the wings into these two connectors. At this point we don't know which one of these is the ailerons and which one is the flaps. So we'll just guess and then if they're wrong we'll switch them around later. So we'll just plug those two in. There we go. So I just popped the rudder control rod on here just so I can test the rudder. I haven't put on the elevator yet but I can do that later. It's very easy. I just want to check to see that all the wires are hooked up and this is one way to do it. So let's now check the wiring with the radio. Okay, just checking the rudder to make sure it is connected to the right port. And it looks like it is. Yep, that goes right and that goes left. So everything looks proper on the rudder. And I assume the aileron is right too. Let me see if that... The rudder will move a little bit with the aileron because I've got the mix on there. If you remember from part one, I'm checking the... Uh... So there is a little mix, but it does see the rudder doesn't move as much as it does here. So that looks good. Now I'm also just checking my flaps channel here to make sure that wire is the flaps. So I can do that right here. Flaps one, flaps two, and it's working. Flaps one, flaps Just got lucky there. So I went and marked that connector there with an F so I know that's for the flaps. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Now checking the aileron servo. So if I turn the plane right, that should move this direction and push the aileron, the right aileron, up. So let's see if it does. And it does. So I know I've got the right side here for that connector. I know this wiring is right for the right side. So I think that's pretty much it for this video. In the next video, we'll go ahead and put the motors onto the nacelles, do the wiring for the servos on the wings, and probably put the tail section together and then just check everything electronically to make sure it works and then it'll be ready for a test flight. So see you next time and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon so you get the notifications when the next video comes up. Bye bye.